Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today, we're going to do my comparison of the Chicago White Sox of 2021 to the Cincinnati Reds of 2021. And as you can see, I have the video running of the uh, showing the board. As usual with these comparison videos, I will go through the Chicago White Sox first, and then I will go through their opponent and compare the lineups, the rotation, the bullpen, and the benches. We are doing a comparison to the Reds because in 2021, just as they did in 2020, the White Sox will play the NL Central. And the Reds, as we all know, are in the NL Central. The White Sox will play the Reds on May 4th and 5th, and then again near the end of the season on September 28th and 29th. So uh, let's get into the comparison. I will do a real quick recap of the White Sox. You have the uh, lineup, as you can see on the board. Um, of Tim Anderson at shortstop. Adam Eaton and Adam Engel probably uh, switching off at right field, depending on what handed pitcher is pitching. Nick Madrigal at second. Yes, Monty Grandal at catcher. Jose Abreu at first. Eloy Jimenez in left field or at DH, depending. Uh, Johan Moncada at third base. Luis Robert in center. Luri Garcia at DH left field or as a super utility man, depending on whether, um, I, I think, whether Andrew Vaughn makes the club out of spring training. Their rotation will be Lance Lynn, Lucas Giolito, Dallas Keuchel, Dylan Cease, and then in the fifth spot, one of Michael Kopech, Carlos Rodon, or Ronaldo Lopez. Maybe even you'll see all three of them at certain times during the season in the rotation. Michael Kopech may start the season in the bullpen. In fact, that's what uh, Tony La Russa has said he anticipates happening. And then maybe move to the rotation later on. So... Uh, because of that, um, you obviously can plan on Rodon and Lopez at various other times starting. And so those are just the um, the possible starters at various times throughout the season. The bullpen will be Liam Hendricks, who came over from the Oakland A's as their closer, and I expect he will be our closer this year. Um... Cody Hewer, Aaron Bummer, Evan Marshall, Matt Foster, Garrett Crotchet, who can throw 100 miles an hour, has a, a lightning arm. Jimmy Cordero may not make the club right out of spring training, but there's going to be injuries. There's going to be the you know usual shuttle between the minor league and the major league, depending on whether the starters are tired um, or uh, the certain relievers are tired and give them a rest. And then the bench you have, uh, as I said, Andrew Vaughn. I expect he should make the club out of spring training, but we'll see. Danny Mendick, backup infielder. Zach Collins, who will be the backup catcher as it looks right now, at least to me. They also do have Yerman Mercedes and he's a possibility as a backup catcher. But I would think they're gonna go with Collins, give Collins a chance. He's highly touted. He should hit better than he has so far in the majors. So we'll see. Mick Rodolfo and then Nick Williams, who was at one time on the Philadelphia Phillies. So that's the uh, White Sox squad. Last year, they were 35 and 25, tied for um, second place technically in the um, AL Central, but really they were the third place team because they were worse than the um, Cleveland Indians who we were tied with for second place. And all of this only one game behind the Twins. 
So good things looking like they're on the horizon for the White Sox because we didn't have Hendricks last year and we didn't have Adam Eaton last year. And um, we did have some guys that underperformed. So let's hope that this year um, bodes better for that. So now to go over the Reds. Uh, last year, the Reds were 31 and 29. They did make the playoffs, though barely. Many people uh, before the 2020 season expected that they might win the Central, and I was one of them. But that did not happen. Um, and as I said, we play them on May 4th and 5th and on the 28th and 29th of September. So we have four games against them in 2021. The uh, lineup for the Reds will be Jesse Winker in left field, Nick Castellanos in right, Joey Votto at first base. Uh, he had a very bad le year last year by anyone's standards, but certainly his. He hit 226. Um, Eugenio Suarez at third base, who had 15 homers on 196 bats. Uh, Mike Moustakis at second. I think he had eight home runs last year. Nick Senzel in center. Kyle Farmer at short. And Tucker Barnhart at catcher. A uh, very good defensive catcher. Uh, cannon for an arm back there. Not much of a hitter. But in the, in the big leagues, what counts a catcher is that you're good with the pitching staff and that you are a good defensive uh, backup you know, a backstop. And Tucker Barnhart is that. Their rotation will probably be uh, Sonny Gray, Luis Castillo, Tyler Maley, uh, Wade Miley, and um, Michael Lorenzen. Last year, Lorenzen didn't have such a great year, but Sonny Gray had a 370 earned run average. Luis Castillo, Luis Castillo had a 321 earned run average. And Tyler Maley had a 359. So their top three are a pretty formidable bunch as starting pitchers. If they can maintain that in 2021, they should be a bit of a threat. Uh, their bullpen will round out as something like uh, Amir Garrett as their closer. Lucas Sims as a setup man for them, possibly. Sean Doolittle, who came over from Washington. Um, with a TJ Antone. Jeff Hoffman. No Ramirez. Cam Bedrosian and um, Sal Romano. Now, with Sal Romano and Jeff Hoffman, there's a possibility you may see them at times as spot starters um, to give, uh, you know, to step in for an injury in the rotation because no rotation goes wire to wire with five guys. And Romano has started in the past for the Reds, and I believe so has Hoffman. Their bench will be Tyler Stevenson, Kyle Holder, D. Strange Gordon and uh, Shogo Akiyama, who came over to the Reds from uh, Japan last year. Very good defensive outfielder, but he also did not have a great year at the plate. Maybe it was just that he hadn't adjusted yet to American baseball. So we'll see. Um, the Reds, the issue that the Reds are going to have is that last year they scored 60% of their runs on home run. Return the beer keg. Cancel the dancing girl. So it's really a lineup full of DHs that um, also have to play uh, defensive positions. And they're not good at they're not good at moving runners around. They're not good at you know the small ball aspect of the game when they need to be. Uh, you have runners at first and second with two outs. Really, all you need in that situation is a base hit. But are they going to get it? Mm, this isn't a group that does that. You have to hope that the next guy up is one of the big bombers and that he hits one of the big bombs. 
So that's basically the issue that they're going to have with that, um, with the, with this lineup. But as I said, their top three starters are very good. And even Lorenzen, I mean, he didn't have a very good year last year, but he has the potential to be very good. And really, we've seen, even so does Wade Miley. He's had a good year in the past with the uh, with the Milwaukee Brewers. So, and that was fairly recently. And that bullpen's not too bad either. I mean, I have Lucas Sims on my Stratomatic team. I love the guy, so I know he's good. Doolittle, of course, he's been a good relief pitcher, um, was the uh, Nationals' closer for the last couple of years. Amir Garrett, obviously, I mean, last year he was very good. He can throw smoke, strikes a lot of people out. So this is a pretty strong bullpen, too. The team, like I said, the team is not bad, except that all they can do is hit home runs, and they're not great at fielding. So uh, that's kind of the issue that they have. So we have four games against them. I wouldn't be surprised to see these these two teams split with each other, 2-2. Two, two. Or someone maybe will sneak, sneak in a 3-1 and one record. That's possible. I think the Sox could take three or four from them. Um, but in general, I'm going to say... I'm going to say a split because the Reds are a pretty good team. Um, I don't see either team sweeping the series, certainly. Um, and we, you know, because we do have our issues when you get to the back end of our bullpen, or uh, the back end of our, well, the back end of our bullpen, um, as far as the, you know, the closers and the setup guys is great. But um, the middle relief for us could be a bit of an issue. Um, Cordero, he had his problems last year. He really only got lefties out um, consistently. Um, and then the back end of the starting rotation has some question marks. When is Kopech going to start? When can we rely on him starting, you know, to be in our rotation um, on a regular basis? Rodon has been inconsistent and has never lived up to the hype. And... Uh, Lopez has come off two consecutive pretty bad years. And Cease, even last year, Cease was not that great, although I I have heard that he's made strides in um, in in training camp, so or in spring training. So hopefully we get something better out of him. If we get something better out of him, I think that we really are going to be a dominant team and may even take three out of four from the Reds. But like I said, in general, I'm I'm looking at a split with these two teams. What do you guys think? Do you think we're a lot better than the Reds? You think we're a little better than the Reds? I mean, I think we're at least better. Uh, the Reds, you know, they uh, they lost some some key parts uh, last year. We're gonna have to see because you I mean you figure, you know, last year they had. Um, you know, they had Trevor Bauer last year, and with Trevor Bauer in their rotation, as dominant as he was, they were 31-29. and 29. So, and now they have to play a full-out season, and I don't know. going to be rough for the Reds, I think. Um, they, uh, I, I don't expect them to make the playoffs, but they still are, they still do have some dangerous aspects to their team, and I think they can be a challenge for the White Sox. But what do you guys think? Leave me a remark down there below in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure to give a thumbs up to the video at the very least. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe and you can get more good content like this. I take requests even. So, hey, I'm not too big to take requests from people, things that they want to see. Check out the channel, you know, if you're new to it. But for right now, that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.